Hill, the, the uncle Adi is here, <laughs> and her program today is about her father's service during the Korean War. Brenda graduated from college and went to England, worked for the BBC for four years, then started her own production company for another five, and then came back here, taught up to Caribou at the Technical School Center, and has her own company. She and her husband, Alan, it's called Crown of Maine. And I'm sure that you've seen some of her documentaries on PBS. A lot of them played on there. What there was the last one was the Acadia bike ride. Cycling Acadia. Yeah. And you might have seen this one. It's called Old Main Swedish Farms. My husband's from New Sweden. I was very lucky to meet a Swede in Maria Sweden. Uh, and so when I was lucky enough to move up there, I went around with Dan Olson, the Scandinavian scholar in the area, and we interviewed all the last of the Swedish speakers. And they're on here speaking in Swedish, and then we have subtitles in English, so we know what they're saying. This was shown on main videos. The other one we've watched is the uh, Christmas in Arusta. That one's excellent. And that it's plays fun. every year. It plays every year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I will. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, our film is very short. It's, uh, in fact, Tootie mentioned that I taught school. I did for 15 years. And while I was working in the school, I thought, well, you know, the students, it's helpful to them learn hi to learn history. So we have my father's collection of photographs from the Korean War. And we interviewed him about his experience. And then we were able to use the pictures to go with his story, as well as some live footage. Uh, but anyway, um, we're going to show this to you. It's very short. It was made by my students. And then we have some Korean War veterans here who maybe could add to the story. We welcome you to tell us about your experiences as well. So thank you very much. And as Tori mentioned, they call this the Forgotten War, but the men who were in it certainly haven't forgotten it, nor their families. So, yeah, and their mothers. And families, absolutely. Okay, so Bill has very kindly offered to be here to for technical assistance. Make it go. Finn to a rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> but I think it's your wife who's finished, yeah. right? Appreciate <laughs> it. Okay. So I think if I just press this button, this should start. <laughs> Free hold your breath and find out. And if it's too loud or too low, let me know and I can adjust the sound here. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. That should be some sounds. Here it comes. Yeah. It used to be louder. Don Nasberg has taken up video production in his retirement. At the age of 72, he enjoys recording scenes from nature, especially wildlife. But capturing scenes isn't a novel hobby for him. His interest in photography began years ago when he served in the infantry at Sandbag Castle in the Korean War. Between October of 1952 and September of 1953, he photographed shots of his army pals miles from his native Maine. Taking pictures at the front is far removed from the photography Don does today. But his memories are never far from his experience in Korea, where he served as a young man in his early 20s in a war that took place more than 50 years ago. Don is still in touch with one of his army buddies, Ollie Seidel, from Washington, Minnesota. We asked Don about his war experiences. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. How old were you when you were drafted? I was 22. Yeah. What did you been doing since you graduated from high school? Well, I was working lumber camp, cutting logs in the Drew Valley, and there was a plantation up by Moosehead. And how did you find out that you'd been drafted? Well, we'd work all week, go on the weekend, so we went out this one Saturday. Took us all day to get out. We had a snowstorm. We had to shovel out to get out over the mountain. Big mountain there, we finally made it out. And then I had my greetings to, 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 to go to the army. 
that's just. What did you think when you read it? I can't remember that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of vaguely remember what you felt when you read those words? Well, I tried to figure I should have stayed back in the camp. <laughs> well, I didn't. I said, well, they'd come get me anyway, so I figured that was it. How did your family feel? Your brother and your father and your uncle and your grandfather? Do you remember them saying anything at all? I don't remember saying anything, no. I don't, I don't remember a lot of things I don't remember. No. So, where did you train? Fort Dix, or Jersey. What sort of things did they put you through or expect you to do? Oh, well, just basic infantry. On, on, uh, taking hikes, 20 mile hikes, and GRI circle there and shooting a rifle and all that stuff, just basic infantry stuff. So you went to Fort Dix, and at what point did you then find out, okay, now you're heading for Korea? Well, they had 16 weeks of basic training. So at the end of 16 weeks, you get your orders to go over either wherever they want to send you. Some guys went to Alaska, some guys went to Korea, some guys went somewhere else. All depending on what he wanted you. So at that point in time, it was me and another fellow decided to go to another school he had for eight weeks training for leadership training. So me and him went there. The rest of them left and we stayed another eight weeks. So we got 24 weeks all together training. And once you arrived in Korea, what did you do then? Where did they send you then? Well, all they do, we just have a place to go by track from here, you know, one place or another, and they took up the line, where the line was, front line. And that's where you went. And whereabouts were you, did they send you? Well, that's where they sent me. To the front, front line. line, but where was the front at that time? Do you remember the name well, of the that line? Well, at that sign, I think it was, yeah, was Sandbag Castle. Well, the front line was at that time was Sandbag Castle. So what year would that have been? 52. October 52. What did you think when you first saw the place? I don't remember, Brenda. I don't remember what I thought about it. Did you look around that juice? Was there a sandbag around here? Or what did you... What did the land look like? Or was the place look like? The place was just all mountains like, all, you know, not all the hills and mountains where they were. Of those of you who went out, what percentage of 
sentence I am killed or what percentage came back, do you think? I don't know. That stuff I ain't gonna talk about, Brenda. I don't I don't wanna talk about that. I don't know. I just wondered, you know, what were your chances of surviving a situation like that? I don't know what the chances would be. So. How much do you depend on your army buddies in a situation like that? Hundred percent. It depends on you. You depend on them. Make sure you're fighting for your country. The only thing you're fighting for is to keep him alive, or he keep trying to keep you alive. That's you're fighting for. And when you uh, when you were in So I told them about it, and they said, your father fought in Korea? And I said, yes. 
and they said, please go home and tell him, thank you, thank you, thank you, because we would never have our freedom without him. So to any of you who served in Korea, please know the people there really appreciate it. Sorry, I'm getting emotional, but it was quite an emotional experience. But anyway, so now we can hear from Uncle Artie about his experience in Korea, which I think was a little different from Dad's. Well, it was, Brenda. I'm not sure they want to hear about it. <laughs> I'm sure they do, unless you had too many trips to Japan. <laughs> I only had one, and I'm not talking about that either. <laughs> So no, when I was there, it was entirely different. In fact, I believe Donnie and I passed on the ocean. I yes. was going over, he was coming back. He, uh, this would have been in probably August of 53, something like that. Mm -hmm. My orders had been cut, and I was on my way, but they said it's been signed, and I was tickled to death. Oh. This is not that wonderful? I think the only thing that, uh, and Donnie alluded to it, the only thing that was good about the war was that it produced a country where people can live free. Yes. And they can build their factories and they can drive their cars and you can go from here to there and you don't need a pass, as opposed to North Korea where there is nothing. You right. don't do anything. You march in line. You say yes sir, no sir, so forth. And if it hadn't been for the Korean War, South Korea would have been just the same. They would have been a completely dominated thing. Yes. So, you know, I had to, my time there was relatively simple. Right. I was an auto mechanic. An auto mechanic. I ran the border. Right. So, he kept the radios running. Right. And one of my jobs was to, we had a, I was in the 5th Air Force, 1st Radio Division, and we had about 40 trucks loaded with radio equipment out at a site about five miles away. Mm -hmm. My job was to keep them running. I didn't have to fire at anybody. I didn't get fired at. It was very Wonderful. Fun. Well, you're yeah. here to tell the tale. I'm here to tell the tale. I'm glad Donnie was here to tell the tale. Yes, yeah. yes. And you with think it, of, you, think of the, you think of the people who were there about 43,000 killed, Americans, yes. something like that. Yeah. And you have sympathy for them for having done that. Yes. But think of their mothers. Oh, yes. You know. Yes, and families, it's so, yeah. so sad. It was sad. That's right. But the upshot of it was that uh, we did get a decent country out of it. Unlike yes. currently, we just kind of get into things and people get killed and nothing gets done. You right. Know, it's kind of too bad. Mm -hmm. that's anyway, right. that's enough of that. It's warm in here. <laughs> well, there was some, some others of you who served in How? Korea. No, I never went to Korea. You never went to? And Lauren. I, I ended up in northern Italy after we, oh. after we got out of basic training. Everybody got orders all going to Korea. And then I got orders and I went to go. Maybe they didn't think I should go to this Christmas. Oh, I'm sure you were good enough. They needed you somewhere else. That's all. So, but I was in from 51 to 54. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you were in and, Italy, uh, North Italy? I was in Korea. Okay. You know where that is. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Near Albania. Yes. Uh, is it across from Albania? In Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. Right on the border of Yugoslavia. There's where Tito was. And yeah. we were keeping him on his side. And I guess we were keeping, he was keeping us on our side. Something. Yeah. But every May, May Day, they had always trouble. Oh, really? That's common in states. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I'm not really a veteran. So you're a Korean character. What branch were you in, Cal? Army. I, I was a cook for the 98th Army Band. Mm -hmm. 
And do we have, is there anyone else here who served, you served in Korea? Korea? Lauren did. Yeah. Yes, whereabouts were you in Korea? <laughs> I was with the 31st Regiment, Georgetown Company of the 7th Division. Mm -hmm. And I only spent in the war a few months. Uh, and then I got shipped out to Japan also, to, yeah. to Yokohama. I went up. And you mentioned you had a good time there, I believe. And well, it was better than Korea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I don't have a lot to say, really. I was online and in a trench watching the truce day come about. Wow. Oh, yeah. And American fighter jets were still strafing the other side of the valley. And then when the time came for the truce, all of a sudden it just, everything ended. Hmm. Wow. You see, that, that's exactly what Donnie told me. Yeah. He says he, they knew it was coming, I think 10 o'clock at night, yeah. would that be right? And they had thrown everything they could lay their hands on across the line, and the Chinese did the same, yeah. coming across. And then the, dead, then the 10 o'clock hit, and it was just dead silence. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was different. Could you believe it when it happened? Was there a moment of disbelief like you just couldn't believe it was finally over? over. Yeah, I could. Yeah. And I kind of, I volunteered for the draft in the first place because I was tired of waiting. Yeah. Wow. And I, kick myself in the butt for, <laughs> for wasting two years of college when I could have been over to Korea during those yeah. Yeah. Heavy, uh, heavy years. But anyway, it all worked out. Yes, that's right. And how do you feel about that war when you think back on it? I mean, in terms of helping to keep South Korea as an independent country, do you think that was an important thing? Yes. Yeah. But after the truce was signed, I stole a Jeep and it went down to Seoul. I wanted to see for myself what it looked like and it was just absolute destruction. Yeah. Everything. I couldn't get a Jeep through the city. Of Seoul? Of Seoul. Wow. So in that perspective, and now you start thinking, my God, what have they done? They've come back from all of that. Yeah, they've recovered. Yeah. It's and a very modern country, isn't it? Oh, yes. I very have, much so. I have some pictures up there uh, that I took and then off yeah. soul yeah. in the bombed out windowless buildings that were there. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I'm going to take a look at it. Good. That's how the station there. Initially, <coughs> north of Seoul. Yeah. So we got to run the city. Yeah, take a look at it. Now, did any of you that were there bump into others from Maine or even from Mons? You bumped into somebody? I bumped into two people from Greenville. You did? And I was talking to the son of one of them just two days ago. Really? Yeah. Really? And, uh, yeah. Do you recall their names? Now it said Dago. And I don't mm -hmm. remember the other yeah. one. Remember the Dago. And do you know of any from Monson who went but didn't come back? From the Korean War? No. Good. That's a good thing. Yeah. If not I have my my lieutenant was killed, uh, taken us to a minefield, and 
blew up, of course, and the car they waited here. So I remember carrying part of him back out. And then what I remember most is a few days later, they had taps in the valley, and we were sitting on the side of the mountain, listening to taps and the echo of them. Yeah, all over. The wow. That's about it. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Mm. I'll tell you a little story about a friend of mine that was there. Yes. In Korea. And uh, when <clears throat> he told me about. I lose my train of thought, so I have to. Uh, <clears throat> Anyhow, he got captured over there, was a prisoner for quite a while. And the hell of it is, he came back, and after a couple of years, he committed suicide. Oh, dear. That's awful too bad. Too bad. And I found out this week, my daughter-in-law has a, one of them smartphones or whatever they are, and she looked up a couple of uh, army buddies, and uh, it's was, it was really something. That picture came right up in her camera, and both of them were dead. They, they died recently, you know. Oh, that's yeah. what you got to find yeah. out about that. Me and Adi, you know, we're the same age, <coughs> yeah. right? Wow. Right, we are. Yeah, you're older. <laughs> three months. Three months or three, three months. days? Three months. Three January, months. February. Okay. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> And he was in the parade in his uniform. Oh, yeah. Wow. And he's got on his shirt. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when he came, he didn't want to wear it. And I insisted no, I that I don't want him to put it on. Yeah. He yeah. deserved yeah. to put it on. No, I don't know about that. Huh? Yes. It's, it's been a long time. Oh. 71 years since it's been. Great, Uncle. <laughs> 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 My daughter had put it away in a closet. I never even knew it was there. Oh, wow. She said yesterday, you ought to wear your shirt going up. I said, what shirt? She <laughs> said, the shirt you get out with. Oh, and sure enough, she produced it. It fits you wonderful. Well, it does. It looks great quite on wonderful. You. It oh, well, it's got I would say it's perfect. At the same time, 71 years, yep. just yep. like him. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I tried my uniform full, on full and uniform. had to put my pants had to be opened up this much <laughs> in the back, and the and the night jacket I, I I couldn't button it. That's why I left it open today. <laughs> it's all right. That's still pretty good. It is yeah. still pretty good. Yeah. Well, Except it was warm. Did you say Addy had a story about a popcorn machine? Yeah, Uncle Addy was oh, no. telling Thank about his <laughs> oh, that experience on the base with a popcorn machine. No, no, Johnny. Brother Donnie went over and what did he say, 51? 52. To 52. October 52. I didn't see him until when I got out and go back from Korea in 54, so it was three or four years. And I happened to meet him at a party here in Monson, and he had, he had your mother on in tow at the time. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he never said anything about what was going on. He didn't. I says, but Jesus, I was over there. I know what it was. Mm -hmm. I says, you know, we had to go up to the army base because we didn't have a place of our own. And one night, the goddamn popcorn machine broke down, and that place went wild. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, didn't he get mad? <laughs> oh, <you're talking> about. <laughs> yeah, you didn't appreciate that. No, I guess you didn't. <laughs> well, yeah. it's interesting uh, because when Dad got out of the war. He was in Augusta where he, he met my mom. But he was working uh, down at Bath Ironworks. So even after he got out of the war, he was helping in a sense. He was painting the big battleships in Bath Ironworks. And then after that, he got a job at Toga's Veterans Hospital. Oh, and he ended up working on the psychiatric ward, oh, yes, he helping did. a lot of the soldiers who had PTSD. One night he had a funny feeling and went to do a bed check and there was an empty bed and he went and found the young man in the shower. He'd slit his wrists. So yeah. dad put tourniquets on him and saved his life. 
So you could say that, you know, the people who went through the Korean War, it kind of, they sometimes it affected them. And in, in good ways and bad, Dad got that job. And, it was what he could still give back when he returned. Did you bring you get down? Okay. Thank you that for coming. Great. Thank you.